teachers in the schools, that it doesn't need to be completely thrown away. What it did for the, this district and um, many other, you know, the states and people that use it is it gave it it elevated the problem of the the difference in you know education the, the education gap those and what we needed to do and that was the impetus to start on the early childhood study and now it's an impetus to get the University of Minnesota working with the uh, K-12 education people and, and looking at education as a complete umbrella from birth to you know out of college and that's the kind of stuff that's going on now. And No Child Left Behind is the one that started that. Why aren't we graduate? Why are we still in Minneapolis? Why do we only have 40% graduation rates or 35%? And what is it that we need to, you know, to catch them up? So, but yes, there's a lot. It punishes good schools. It, it's, it's a, uh, the model is, is that even if you're doing, it, it gets to a point where there's no return in terms of when you've got a school district like Wayzata or Minnetonka that are already up there, you have to keep progressing and progressing to where? I mean, how can you <laughs> get better than 95% graduation rates, you know, or whatever, maybe 100%, but, you well, know. My, my daughter teaches uh, in Minneapolis. Yes. And they have 82 different languages. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> one of the issues is, of course, they're keeping score on minority people and, uh, you know, people from other countries that have been here six months and then they're tested. Yes. So it's, it's a whole different set of problems than you have in some of the suburban schools. Yes, it definitely. And you bring up an excellent point. And uh, I've always, in, in everything, I keep it local as much as I can. But I will tell you that one area that I have really realize is that we cannot ignore Minneapolis when it comes to schools. And I remember, I regret this, and I would like to go back and tell the lady last year that I was wrong, but I was, it was early on when I started knocking doors, and a woman in Long Lake came up to me and she said, um, okay, so you're on the Wysetta School Board, so who cares? So what are you gonna do for the kids in Minneapolis? And I said, um, well, Nothing. I said, I'm going to work for our schools in this district. That's what my job is. And I mean, and you know what? That wasn't the right answer. <laughs> it really wasn't. And so many times I realized that this last session that we all are going to suffer if Minneapolis doesn't get it. And But I don't think more money is just the answer. I think that we have to do things differently. And I think we have to look at educating those kids differently. And, and so one of the things that I supported in the last session was some charter school reform, which obviously we know in, from the papers that there's been a lot of um, charter schools that have mismanaged their money and, they're do and there hasn't been the oversight and so forth. But this bill that took two years in the making and I, we spent a lot of time in committee looking at it is, is a good bill and I did vote for it and it did pass. And I think that we need to give our parents in these inner city schools that want to educate their children, want they, to give them options. And we've got some success rates going and uh, other success rates throughout the country. And um, I think that that's really important. I also think that parents shouldn't be looked down upon if they're going to go to private school or homeschool or whatever it is. I think that one size fits all isn't right for education. I think that every child learns in their own way and I think that we've got the best uh, public schools in this district it, than we have almost in the entire state. We are so lucky and it and they're good and they can be a role in a model of excellence and I use them a lot during session. I brought the superintendents and people in to testify and we were able to get some really good changes in education because of our school districts and I'm going to continue to try to do that. Yes. Senator, state-run gambling. Uh, about nine out of ten people gamble. We gambled here tonight. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Your colleague, Senator Day, he's yes. been trying to get that through for state-run gambling at uh, Canterbury Downs. Yes. I have no reason why it's not going through. It's money that we could use. Yes, I understand. Since everybody gambles in the state one way or form another. 
Well, the big thing that I think that, that and, I'm, and, and we're going to see if that's going to come back this session, we didn't even get to vote on it on the House floor. And it, it, one of the legislators got up and started to talk about it, then withdrew the bill, bill at the last minute. We were all prepared to vote and do what it, whatever was going to happen. But Racino, I think, is, is something that I got a lot of emails about, and particularly because they feel that that would be very good. It, it didn't, ha it didn't no, come it to the House floor. Going, no. They didn't. It didn't is it going to come up again? I, well, I think it should. I mean, the other thing that never came, you know, there were lots of, there were lots of things that didn't come up because it was, like, it, that was, actually, that bill, we were supposed to hear it on the last night of session. And there were, there were one or two bills like that that just didn't happen because we got in, and we were in session until midnight. But that's another, why does it take so long to get all this stuff in May? You're still working. I mean, there's months to get this stuff done. And, it seems like we're always running till the end, and yeah. then there's going to be a special session. And my goodness, what are they doing? What are you guys doing? We were, we were sitting in committees doing ah. nothing. We well, were talking that's, about that's, well. That's, that's <laughs> not working yes, we were working. We weren't working together, and we sat in committees, and we would. It was I, well. I'll tell you what it was like. It was like going to college for free, but it wasn't free because I was working. But I, I said to my, I thought to myself, this is like going to college. I'd have all these people from all over this. The, the country testifying, especially in education. But and then I have to wake myself up, wait a minute, why aren't we talking about the budget? And every time that that was brought up, it, it just, it, the committee chairs have a lot, and they're, they're selected. By, yeah, and, yeah. and so I, we could bring, you know, I'm on tape bringing it up, I'm on tape telling them what they think, what I think, and it just, you know. You gonna run again? Absolutely. <laughs> now, Have all this fun, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, and I'll tell you why. It's not because I just love the long hours and the and the big salary. <laughs> and the confusion. Uh, and, and the confusion. Uh, it's because I love this district. I really do, and I love the state. And um, I will. T I, I don't want. I'm, I'm very happy as the rep. I mean, I'm not going to go anyplace. I'm not running for governor. One, one last question, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I'm no, keeping you here. So. No, no. Do you write all your emails yourself or all the Yes. Time? Well, not uh, not all reps do, but I will tell you, you see, I have, I, I share an assistant. I, I meant the one that you publish. Up yes. The oh, I, I have a writer that works with me. Huh. And he and I, and there are, there are some of them that I've written all myself, you know, but I, and I have, oh, I love this young kid. He, I just got him about a month ago, and he actually helped me with my last, you know, my last one. And I, you don't have much time to all that. But I review them, mm -hmm. and we sit down, and we say, okay, this is what we're going to talk about, and then he starts out, and then I make changes, and then we go back and forth. But um, that, we have one assist in the house, we have, um, in, in my caucus, we have one um, assistant for three legislators instead of one on one. So I have a third of a person, and she's <laughs> going to have a baby now, which I'm very happy about. Well, I guess who right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but um, that's how it goes, you know. But let me tell you, I don't know how, many, how somebody can do this job without, you know, having taken the speed reading course and doing. A lot of the things that I've been trained to do, and it's not Probably easy. Probably a lot of them don't. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yes, I, re I and I respond to all the e emails personally too, I except if it's a if it's a uh, mass email, you yep. know. And I'm then I'm at your letter. If you yeah, know. my That's letters. Yeah, yeah I, we do. And, yeah. But I also I have help. I don't do it completely. Well, Connie, thank you very much for coming. Oh yeah. Thank you.